Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to be performing a pressure test on the ZoomLock Push to Connect refrigerant fittings. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. In today's video, we're going to be doing a pressure test using nitrogen on the ZoomLock Push to Connect refrigerant fittings. I have made a previous video on how to install these along with a review. I have got a lot of mixed comments and the main concern seems to be leaks. So what we're going to do here, we're going to pressure test them and see what happens. The majority of people who seem to have an issue with these couplings were using soft tubing, not hard drawn pipe. So in this demonstration, we're going to be using this half inch removable coupling with soft tubing. To perform this demonstration, I'm going to be rigging something up here. So here I have a piece of half inch tubing OD for refrigeration pipe. Here's our half inch coupling, a pipe cutter and a pigtail so we can add pressure. So let's begin. Just a heads up, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and let's get straight into it. Let's begin by prepping our pipe, make sure we have nice clean cuts. And if you're interested in how to install these, I will leave a link for the previous video in this video's description. So let's begin. And I feel like the biggest part of this is preparation. I just want to explain exactly what I'm going to be building here. I have two pieces of freshly cut pipe. In between is going to be the coupling. I'm just going to crimp one end, braise it, and install this pigtail on the other end so we can add pressure and read pressure. This is now crimped and it will be brazed shut. On this end, I'm going to take the pigtail, slide it into the pipe a little bit, crimp this, and braise that. Now we're going to prep the pipe and install our fittings. And that is it. From here I'm going to install a Schrader valve on the pigtail. I have my analog manifold connected to a nitrogen tank and here is a wireless digital probe so we can read pressure both ways. Here I have it connected and we're going to charge it up with nitrogen. Alright, so it took as much as it could take. We got about 490 pounds or so. Let's go ahead and uh, spray some leak check on here. All right, if you guys can see, we actually do have a small leak right there. So here's the other side of the fitting and this doesn't appear to be leaking. You can see the clear difference from the left side to the right side. The left side is clearly leaking. The right side is not. To me, I wouldn't say it's exactly the fitting, but it might've been the preparation. And that's what I said from the beginning. Preparation is definitely gonna be the most important part. This is a removable coupling, so I have the removal tool. I'm gonna try to remove the part that's leaking and try to reinstall it the same way it is. If that doesn't work, then I'm probably gonna prep a new piece of pipe and see if that holds. So let's take the pressure out of here and continue. This is the removal tool and each is sized for the specific size pipe you're using. Got a 
little bit of something here. I don't know if that could have prevented it, but it's such a minor thing. Listen, I got the pipe off, and I'm going to put the same one right back on. All right. Let's try it again. All right, so that's the pressure in the line right now. 351.8 PSIG. It seems like it's dropping slowly. Let's go ahead and give this some time. This is all the pressure I have left in my nitrogen tank. So excuse that. Right there, we just lost a tiny bit. Let's take a look at the fitting itself. As you can see, we do have a little bit of a leak. If we look at the fitting, you can see some bubbles and that indicates that there is a leak. It seems to be a bit smaller, but we do have less pressure at this point and it's definitely leaking. As you can see, we are clearly losing pressure. I did make up another piece, so let's go ahead and remove the side that was leaking and try this one more time. All right, so I got more nitro. We're at 501.3. Let's give it a shot. All right, so it's been a bit over 10 minutes and we have lost pressure. We're down to 499.6. You just saw it drop again. Let's take a look at the fitting. It's clearly not leaking as it was before. So preparation definitely is key, but we are losing pressure. And it's just a small amount, almost that you can't even really see it, but we are losing pressure. This is one side of the fitting, and let's take a look at the other. To the naked eye, you almost can't really tell that it's leaking. You've really gotta give it time. Looks like I see tiny, tiny, tiny little bubbles on the other side as well. And we didn't notice it because the opposite end was just leaking heavy the first time. I'm gonna give this another chance. Personally, I can't really see it leaking, but there was a drop in pressure. Maybe the electronics are sensitive and it needs some time to equalize. So let's see, we're at 499.5 and let's give this half an hour to an hour. I'll come back, see what kind of pressures we have and I'll give you my final thoughts. So I stepped outside and just came back. It's been about at least another hour. As you can see, it's slightly fluctuating, but since I left, the pressures actually went up, indicating there's no leak. So to me, that is a good sign. The electronics are definitely sensitive. So there you see like in the decimal point, it fluctuates a little bit, but we have been staying at 499 for well over an hour, I would say maybe even close to two at this point. So it seems that these actually do hold. This is definitely a cool invention, but my final thoughts would be personally, I wouldn't want to risk it. If it's not perfectly, perfectly prepped, you're going to have a leak and, you know, having to redo all those kind of things really gets annoying. And at the end of the day, personally, I would prefer to braise. This was definitely a good test. Would I recommend it in certain situations, possibly more of an emergency situation? So, hmm, you know, I have, <laughs> I have mixed emotions right now for the first time. It leaked second time it seems to hold and it's hard to say if I'm a fan or not personally I definitely would prefer to braise but for emergency situations this would definitely be good there we go we're at 500 psi just went up again so the electronics 100% are sensitive needs some time to I guess just you know get an accurate reading and yeah Specifically, these were the removable ones, and I spoke to a guy at the supply house, the parts sales counter, and they told me that they don't actually restock on the removable end ones anymore because they did have bad reviews, but they also sell non-removable couplings, and those seem to sell and seem to have better reviews. I did happen to purchase both because I wanted to make a video on them both. On the left, this is the non-removable one. It's 3 8 coupling, since it's 410A optimized. And the one we used was this one on the right, the half inch coupling, which was removable. So, if you would like me to perform a pressure test on the one on the left and explain the differences, leave a comment below. That always definitely helps. Also, leave your thoughts in the comments. I would definitely like to read them as I read all my comments. And yeah, this was definitely a good test to perform. And it seems like, as far as the removable one, if you don't prep it perfectly, then you're gonna have a leak. And 
that's too much of a risk for me because I know 100% that the brace is going to hold and I would definitely sleep better at night knowing that. Quality over quantity and price anything any day. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time. Thank you.